Welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles tutorial and this one's going to be skinning and how I do the uh, metal flake paint uh, stripes and I'm actually going to start from scratch so I can show you the whole deal start to finish. So the first thing and I'm going to do a truck for uh, Thursday's video and so let's uh, jump right into it. So first thing we need is we need the flake. So I made this flake sample here. You can see the size of it. It's 16,384 by 8,192. Excuse me. And the reason it's so big is it's you, you've got to get it on the uh, truck in the stripe so that it doesn't look overwhelmingly large like the flake sample you're going to use. So what I did to make this flake, and I'm going to, I think I just found a better flake that I really like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple things here. We're going to, uh, I guess what I could do is just use this layer here. We'll just add a new layer, hide this one. So we still got this size. We're going to, I found another, for, so for the flake, you just go online and search. So I just went and searched for metal flake and I kind of like this one. I don't know if I've ever tried this one before. So let's, uh, what we want to do is get it sort of large on our screen so that we are going to copy this. So it's got some weird stuff in it. I don't know how that's going to play out, but it's got a really nice section through here. It looks pretty good without getting too fuzzy. So what we can do, uh, we'll just try it. I'll show you how to make a great big sheet of flake, number one. And if that gets really boring, uh, I will uh, move on. I just, yeah, let's uh, print screen. And we get this little thing here. So we'll just take the size we want. I don't know if I want that fuzzy bit. I'm not I'm sold on that. I think, well, shoot. We do have an awful big flake to make. Let's we'll try it, just see what happens. So we'll select it. We'll try not to get anything outside of the border. We can trim it. We have to after. So now we can go here. And we can paste it on here. That's ah, pretty, pretty darn big. That's kind of too big, I think. Let's compare that to this one. Oh, yeah, it's way too big. That'll never work. So, what we have to do, let's uh, control X, take that off of there. We'll make a new. We'll just leave it that size. Okay, paste it on there. Now what we got to do is shrink it down. So we're going to hold shift and hold the corner of the butt and then shrink it down. We're going to make it smaller. And if you hold if you hold the shift, it keeps the ratio, which is kind of handy. Yeah, now it just looks kind of crappy, doesn't it? Let's copy that and go over here. Put it back on here. See how it compares to the other one. Hmm. It's darker. I don't know. Maybe we'll just go with the other one. The other one worked pretty good. Let's undo that. So anyway, what you do is, just to show you, you get your... So this started out as something like this, really small. You put it in a corner. And what you're going to do is you're going to go, um, what I do is I would go um, copy and paste it. And then you can just drag it and look down here. So our X direction is this, is 87 pixels. So you go 87, you drag this till you get 87 again. And there you go. And then, see, this one's got an unfortunate pattern right there. That really stands out. And you'll see my other one has just all full of these patterns, but it's not as bad. You can see them here, here, here. And you just avoid them, and or I'll show you how to cut them out when you make a stripe. It's really easy. It's like no biggie. But this is a much better one, so find your flake. you got to make a great big honking sheet of it. So once again, 16384 by 8192. So instead of going on forever about making this, I already got this one. 
Let's just really quickly go back here and look at that flake right there. Oh, shoot, I don't want to be there. But then again, that's not a real bad flake, is it? But anyway, you find your gold flake sample that uh, makes you happy, and you copy it. Just look for images. I'm not sure which one I actually used in the sample I'm using now. But anyway, just go through and find a sample. Same with silver. That's what I did with the silver metallic. And then what I do is I keep everything in a, on my, you know, I have it on this drive here, skinning resources. I've had to rebuild all this since I wrecked my PC, or you know, I had to re-image my PC. So I have one for gold and I have one for silver. Here's the big one. There's a small one. And we're going to need the big one. Might as well open it. And it's got quite a pattern through it too, but it doesn't matter. Like you got to realize the size of this thing and on your truck, it's going to be a piece like here. And you can, you can do things to get what you want out of it. I'll show you that. You just need a really big sample just to get the granularity down so that it looks okay when you put it on your on your truck. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's start. And we're going to start making a skin. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm, whoops, go back here to paint. I'm going to open a previous skin so I can get the color of the pinstripe and the goggles logo. So did I open? No, open. Uh, we'll go to the G drive here, mod trucks, we'll go to the root of 389, PDN file, and goggles paint and chrome. Yeah, a couple things I'm going to do here. I'm going to, oh, that's the DDS. I don't want the DDS. I'll open, we want the, why did I have the DDS in there? Here we go. We'll grab the high roof. That shouldn't be in there. A couple things here. We're going to want to pick the color. So I'll grab the this little guy. I'll go to the driver's side and pick that. We want that. And the other thing I'm going to do, I might just take a sample from here for the spacing just to save some time. I already have that, so why not? Why reinvent the wheel? Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate my template uh, image, rotate counterclockwise 90. I always work when I can from the driver's side, and I usually do things left to right. It's just from you know when I when I draw things before we had computers. <laughs> yes, I'm that old. So anyway. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of layers on here. We'll just slap some down. We'll quickly put that sample in here. Now, does that look like it's in the right scale? I don't think so. That's way too big. So that whole notion is out the window. All we can get from this is spacing. So we can't use that. So, But what we can do, and this is going to wreck it, is if we squash this down and see how it changes the flake. But we'll use it as a as an idea for what we're going to do with our size of our stripes because what we're going to do is we're going to come down the hood at that angle and we want them to be of a size that when we come down here and come back with the smaller stripes it doesn't look cramped so i think those got to be about i don't know how is that going to look when that's over here going off the ooh, might be a little small oh what we could do Start with them small on the front and make them bigger when we get over here. I mean, we could do that. So we could use this as an idea. So we can, if we hold shift, see how I just got that right locked on horizontal again? I just held shift. So if you don't hold shift and you move it, you do this. If you hold shift, it locks into angles. So common angles. That's yeah, it's kind of handy. It's probably uh, fifteen 
30, 45, 60, 75, 90. So that's kind of a handy trick. So let's go over here. And we're going to look at this because we don't want to look at it on an angle. Because if we look at it on an angle, see how when you zoom in, it does this. And we go straight, it's straight. So we want, we want to get it over here where it's going to be straight. But I think what we're going to end up with is coming up to about here with those stripes. Let's just stick that right there. And then we're going to look at our stripe sizes, what we're going to use here. So let's get our paint on here. We got nine. I can tell right away this is going to be like five or something. Five's even pretty big. Hmm. I think it's going to have to do. And I always go with an even number. I've said this before because if we make this six, get a fuzzy edge, make it seven, sharpens it up again. Make it four, got a fuzzy edge. So we're going to go five. And uh, that's going to be the size of that. Okay, so that's, we know that. So what we'll do now is, um, let's get rid of that. Don't need that there. Uh, we can take this thing. Probably going to just... Uh, Control uh, X to cut it. Control V, and I'm going to use these as a sort of a guide because kind of in a hurry here. Like we don't want to reinvent the wheel and take all day, so we're going to put a few of these slivers around here. We're just going to, oops, cut some pieces out of here, and we're going to use these. And what I do is, when I don't have these, I make them. When I gotta run curves or lines on a that aren't straight or parallel, so I make these little like when I did the Mac trailer for uh, Roland's uh, 389 comes with that Mac trailer. I uh, did a whole series of these down the side for all those various stripes. I did the Powder River skin for it. That was a little challenging that thing because the uh, curve in the side of the if you're familiar with this. Mac step deck, there's a step deck, I think so. Yeah, with the uh, it's got the big arch in it. This one has to go up just a little bit. Oops, oh crap, let's go. There we go, just gotta move, move it up just a smidge. Why is it? Oh, <laughs> try to move nothing. I ah, should be about there, I guess that's good. And you can copy and paste these too. Works fine. Let me just do one more. Put one more. These over here. Right about there. And just gotta go up a bit and turn a bit. Probably good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the average of those. We're not gonna freak out if we're not, you know nailing each one of those perfectly it's that the line arc that we're going to make is going to be pretty good and then this has to go over here it's got to be straight right across here so our target is going to be well out here because we're going to come back up with that jaunty angle that we're using there and whatever it is we're going to just make a new one here we're not going to we're not going to try and copy the old angle so now what we do is we make some stripes. So we're going to go a new layer over top of that one because this one's going to get removed later. So what we do is we're going to uh, get our stripe tool. We've got our five pixels. And we're going to start by going here where it's straight. Uh, and I think we're going to try and get our arc going right through that line there. So we'll see how it looks from here. We may have to start higher up or over here. We'll try it here for, for giggles for a start. We just draw our line in all the way down to the front where we think we're going to go. You can see, yeah, we're, we're going to try and go around here. Then we're going to go in, have this little guy move it up. And we're going to take this one and move him up till we get that one starting to look okay-ish. 
We're not sold on it yet. But we're trying to follow this arc of that, that hood line there. Looks okay. Looks like it's going to be curving for a fair bit. And I don't, it's not even going straight yet. So that's an issue. So what we're going to do, drag this dot to the right and try and bring it up and see. Now we look like we're going straight here. You can usually tell when you find a section of the line that's not got this double thing on it. So right there, you could consider that straight. That's a pretty good place to be going straight, actually. Got all a nice curve in here. Uh, I'm gonna go straight there. That's not bad. The line looks sort of natural. And see how we're doing on our little intersection points here. Okay, so we got to move some of those. So now, here's a, a little trick. Well, I don't know if it's a trick. So if we remember this point here, this big V pointing up, we've got one of our little dots for moving a line right there. Where's another one? The back edge of the door. So that big V, the back of the fender going up, this will just give us a hand when we draw the next line. But before we do the next line, we're going to go to that under layer. I'm going to grab these little guys here. We're going to use these now to set our other lines. We're going to move him there. I'm going to give him a little bit of a curve. This other guy's curved. That one's fine. That one's good. That one needs to be turned a bit. Oh, excuse me. And that's going to work. Yeah, it should be fine. All right, so now we can draw our other lines and we get the spacing right. So what I do, like once again, to get your spacing here, if you're just operating in a parallel, it's really easy. So this is like, a, you know, we're kind of looking at a bit of an advanced thing here with what we're doing. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's a little trickier is all. So we're going to take this, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna move it down to there, and that'll be our target. And then we're gonna look for getting all of those lines sort of coming together right around here where they're straight. And then, because that line right here is where we get rid of the fuzzy edges, that's where we're gonna cut it. Then we get all our line edges here, we're gonna grab them, we're gonna extend them all at once, and we're gonna start going real fast once we get out here. And this will be the slow bit right here. But let's just carry on. Let's draw another line. Um, put it out to here. And I guess what I could have done is put one of those things down here. You know that? Maybe it would be a good idea. Let's undo that line. Go here. Oh, I had it on the wrong layer anyway. Let's copy and paste this guy and just drag him over here for the front of the line. While we're at it, we're going to copy and paste him again. We're going to turn him around. And uh, I'm not sure where this is going to go after, but we'll probably put uh, get a couple of them set up over here for bringing that other line down. Let's just get a couple of them here we can grab later. Okay, now let's get to the proper layer. should be here. Uh, this will be another thing I'm going to show you. We're going to do all the horizontal lines on one layer, and we're going to do all the vertical lines on another layer, So, that, and I'll show you how quickly we can trim and edit and turn them into curves and bring the other lines down. So, yeah, I know I'm kind of getting into the weeds on this, but hopefully this is going to help you make uh, good stripes on anything you want to stripe in the future. So let's do this again. Oops, I let go of that darn thing. So we had the back edge of the door for one of these, or not the back edge, but close. We're gonna just put him there for now because we have to move this one. He's about in the right place. He's lined up with this thing. Oh, 
clean that up. This nest come down. Now we're hitting that one, sorta. That one, that one. Yeah, so we're good. We're hitting everything where we should. Now what about where are they coming together? They're coming together one above the other, perfect. So that's gonna be parallel lines there. Jeez, I'm wondering. Yeah, I, I like the smoothness of the line. We're gonna have to see how it looks on the truck. Hopefully it doesn't look goofy. If it does, well, do it again. So let's make another line. Zoom in here. It's control, and you scroll your mouse wheel in and out to uh, to move the line or the zoom level, so you can see in what you're doing. This is still on about the right place here. Now, as you go down, you know, note of caution: this should really come in a bit. We'll see if it is. This is a pretty broad line, so maybe it isn't. This one should come in a little bit, not so close to the edge of the door. Because uh, as the line comes down, the arc gets tighter on the inner lines. So, but uh, I think we're looking okay. Those look kind of parallel to me. That one's a little low right here. That one's right on. That one's right on. That one's right on. So if we're thinking one is a little low right here, because it's hard to tell. Uh, maybe it's good. Let's um, just remove it for a sec. It's just the teeniest bit low. I think it's going to be fine. It's like, you know, it's almost immeasurable. Let's do another line. Hey, that sounds like a bad trip from the 70s. Okay. Okay. And this one should come about here, probably. This one should be over here. Oh, see, we're a little out of whack here, so we're probably going to have to move that right-hand dot. Yeah, that's just starting to whisper through there. What do we got here? This is not in the right place. You notice I'm bringing all the lines, even though they're going to end at different places up here. I'm bringing them all forward to the same place. But they're all going to get trimmed back. And we're going to do that on another layer or when we create the vertical lines. And you'll see how we trim them. And so we trim it for maximum efficiency, if you will, if, uh, for getting things done in a hurry. Let's bring this back here a bit. And that should bring that down. We're in the right place here now. That's real close there. Real close. And that's close enough for grenades and horseshoes. And some women I know. So let's leave that like that. Now uh, we can get rid of... Uh, well, I guess we can leave those things there for now. Let's build the front. This is going to be the fun part. So what I'm going to do... we got to start a new layer. Well, before we do, actually... Yeah, I guess we start the new layer first. Make our get our line tool, and we're going to use that thing where we can get a repeatable line. So we go down. We're going to hit the shift key. We're going to try. So this is 15 degrees, and I think we're going to try 15 degrees. And just for giggles, let's see what 15 degrees looks like over here when we go up there. Yeah, it's going to be fine. So oh, we want to go about here. So we're going to go 15. We're going to start with this. Now we're going to go to our this layer. And what we can do, we can name these layers. Let's call this one test. And we're going to call this. Oh, I'm not going to name that yet. We know which one. Well, I guess I don't name it. But if you want to keep them sorted, you can call them, uh, oh, I don't know. Hor is for horizontal. We can call this layer vert for vertical. And that 
I because I'm going to end up merging those anyway. But anyway, so we're in this layer here now. Oops, we got to go to the test layer. Grab our thingy bobbies here. I'm going to grab this one. Control X, Control V, and we're going to see. Do we have it? So that should be perpendicular. You can see that's that's horizontal. And one click up should be 15 degrees. So that should put it perpendicular to that line. So this is going to be, we'll bring this up to here. No, that's too far. There, down a bit. There, I'm going to grab the other one. Control X, Control V, we'll hold the shift key. It's locked in there. Okay, and this is going to come out right down here somewhere because we have to get out of that turning and get heading that way with the smaller lines. So there we go. We're ready. So now we go to vertical line and we're going to make some more lines. So uh, we're going to hold the uh, shift key. We're gonna, we want this one's next, so go down here, and we can bring it down to there, and then we can grab it and move it to line up with those other dealy bobbers. And then we can draw another one. So we're gonna come from here, we're gonna hold the shift key, go down, get that same angle. It's going to be this one right here, about like that. I just hit escape to get to clear things like I just, here I'll undo. So you had the lines on here and I'm done moving it. If I just hit escape, then that clears away. So let's draw one more line, shift, and run down to there. It's not bad, it's hitting there, it's looking okay. So we got that. Now what we want to do is get these lines. Geez, I wonder if they're going to be big enough. This is so congested down here on this truck that up here, I think what we're going to do is, we're, yeah, I don't know. We have to increase the size of them somewhere. Maybe when we turn the corner and go up here, we're going to make them bigger. And across here, bigger. So the, I think maybe the best thing to do is just try it first. Anyway, I mean, this is a how-to, right? <laughs> I'll probably have to go on and finish this skin in my own time. So what we need to do is grab... We're going to go here on this layer, drivers. We're going to grab all of this now. Copy that. We'll go back here. Go to the test layer. Paste it. I'm going to bring it over here. We're going to put it beside that. And this is going to just get the scale right for the smaller stripes. And so once again, if we weren't, if we were starting from scratch, we would just be deciding this stuff out of our head. You know, we wouldn't be goofing around like this. So, but now we know we want that size. Yeah, I think these might be a little narrow, but going to look at it anyway once again this area is really tight in here it's not like on the on the 389s have such a nice straight hood here and a lot of space it makes the 389s just awesome to paint they're like a canvas that's why you see so many great custom 389s in real life and you see uh, those guys who like to do skins going nuts on them in the uh in the game so here we're going to cut ourselves a sliver here and bring this over here and we're going to we may end up that may be too tight to the other line we may be able to increase that space a little bit but what we'll do is um we're going to get them all in place. So when we, if we move them, we're going to move them all together. 
so that we can't keep our uh, nice space. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, that's a mistake. Let's not do that. Undo. Let's grab this guy. Let's bring him down here. We we'll just look at our clearance over the fender is what we want here. As we want to just come over the top of the fender. Fender's probably going to end up being up around here somewhere. I don't think it comes right down to there. I just don't want to go over that. Uh, yeah, there's that. I don't know what do you call it. The chamfer in the corner of the fender. If you're looking at it from the front. And you see the fender transition into the side of the hood. You don't want to be going across that. So I think we'll go with that. And then in order to get this straight, what we'll do is we'll just take this and we're going to drag it. Oh, we're going right through the door. So that's kind of goofy. And this has to go right off the back of the cab. So let's find out where is a good place to put this line on the truck. I'd like to go across the bottom of the door like that. I think it would look better. Okay, so that's going to be the plan. So what we're going to do is go in here. Now we just hit the uh, rectangle select. And we're on, we're on this bottom layer. We're not going to hurt anything. We'll just grab all that, delete that. There. Now this, all we got to do is aim for that. And get rid of all this because it's going to be a vertical line. We don't need all those little thingamabobbies. We can get rid of that too. Okay. So we know where we're gonna what we're aiming for to run right through there on a parallel line. So now we're going to go back to the horizontal lines. We're gonna draw some horizontal lines. It should be nice and fun. So we're gonna intersect this one. And so we'll uh hit shift. We'll run that right out the back. Uh, we don't need to do that. Actually, I'll show you a little trick. We just need to go this far. And let's line it up. And they're looking tight, eh? Wow. I wonder if I should make these ones a little bigger on this skin. Might. Let's do another line here. And shift. Maybe we got to space them a little wider because even at five pixels... It's looking a little jammed up. Yeah, we'll go about that wide. Oh, boy. What's that going to do at the door? Well, we'll find out soon enough. And our space. So to get our space between them, what we'll do is we can go over here. And right where they went vertical, we got to find that. Or horizontal, rather. I'll just right about here. Copy that. Control V to paste it. I'll go over here. And we'll put that there. Let's put it out here. And we're going to go Control X. And I'm going to put it on the test layer because it's a little fuzzy. I don't want the fuzziness to come in here. There. Now, what we can do, we can take these other, uh, go horizontal here, sorry. Grab these guys. Copy, paste. And, oh. Now we'll just flip it around. Hold shift. Rotate it till it's parallel again. So I was getting into that other line there. That gives us our spacing, so this space through the middle is the same all the way around. Well, it doesn't look at here, does it? Looks at there. That one looks a little tight, but it also looks kind of cool. <laughs> I think we're going to leave that. That's a good thing. Okay, so now what we want to do is go to our uh, horizontal and we're going to just grab all of these, Control-C, Control-V, grab that dot and drag it over here and see where it runs. And it ain't great 
because it's running on the bottom of the door, so we got to move it up a little bit because we we increase the size of them so we can uh, uh, control X, control V, bring them up a little bit. We're going to get them where we want on the door right there. And let's, now what we can do, because we're on the same layer. See, these ones are on the same layer, but we don't want them there. So it's pretty easy. All you do is just go grab these guys, control C, control V, and we'll just run right through there and they're gone. The other ones are gone. Now what we want to do is get some curves in here so this thing all starts to look right. So that's pretty easy. What I usually do, in all honesty, is uh, I just uh, do it freehand. I'll, or Well, sort of freehand. I'll show you what I mean. But anyway, the first thing we got to do here is get the Rectangle Select tool. And we're going to start trimming these all, trim all this extra stuff away. So we're on the horizontal layer, so we want to trim the vertical stuff away. So let's trim some vertical stuff. So we select the vertical layer. This line has to stay. This one here has to stay. Uh, do, do, do what has to go here? That goes to there. That goes to there. That's oh, those are all fine. Switch to the horizontal layer. This has to go. So we get rid of that. We get. Let's get rid of that test layer now too. Uh, on the horizontal, this has to go. That has to go. What is that? And that. So those are all gone. Down here, it's going to be uh, from here over. Here over. And this one just to there. Then on the vertical, we want to get rid of, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're going small here. That's all of that. And then this and all of that. Okay, so that's, now we got to put radius corners in there, make it look good. So what I usually do, um, I can go in here with this rectangle select and I can just start here and just take that out. I don't know where, hmm, let's see, we got to think of a size, we can always, Increase that later. And then get the horizontal guy out of there. And go, that's not going to be enough, is it? That curve. I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make, this is time to merge these two layers, make it easier. Let's just hit the down arrow, the red down arrow. Now, we're just going to call it uh, lines. Oops. Had the cap lock on. There we go. So this way we can we can just trim them a little easier. Let's start right about here. Just trim them. Start about here. Trim that. Start about here. We'll, uh, we'll trim... Yeah, we may need to trim them again. I'm going to start a new layer here and just do the the radiuses. And if I don't like them... Now, I do this two different ways. Like, there's if you're really shaky, you can do this. You can do... Um, select a uh, ellipse. And you can do an ellipse. And then just look down the bottom left corner and see I got 34 by 34. And you can also hold shift and it'll give you the right size. And you can do this, put them on here where you think they're going to, where you want them. And you can increase the uh, size. 
I don't mind doing this, although sometimes you'll, I'll show you. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do it like this, and then I can show you what the pitfalls are and what to do to get it right. Because to me, the, the line sometimes, it doesn't... If you look in here, this area, see, we got it sticking up. It's getting a little fuzzy right here. Like, see how these lines are coming down? This bit here on that arc. It's coming down below this, like that's sticking up now. So you bring that down here, but you got a bunch of stuff down here. You're probably going to have to trim that later. And you can't say, oh, I'm going to put it right. You know, you have to juggle this with this over here. So you want to look where you're not making a big difference. So that looks like right there is the right place. And we could try this, and I'll show you what, what to do. So that was 49 by 49. So what I would do is I would copy that, uh, control C, control V. Oh, and that didn't work. Undo, undo. There we go. Are we still moving it? Yeah, we should be able to. Oh, I know what we got to do. Yeah, we're on a separate layer. Just enter it. And then we could go. Um, Uh, well, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, let's just leave it for now. We'll do the trimming. So we grab our rectangle select. We just come right through here. We'll grab that. We'll delete that. And we'll go over here. Delete that. Oh, too much. Undo. Come down here a bit. And then we'll go back to our lines. We'll go over here. We'll just take a bit. Of, oh, <laughs> I didn't get it. Sorry. Lines. Come on. There we go. And we can just trim that line back a little bit. So that's a way to make it real smooth curve. And I don't mind it. It's just that you got to doctor this up a little bit. And I'll show you how I do that. So we'll go back to the curve here. Going to grab this one. And we'll go Control C, Control V. And we'll bring it down here. And we'll put it in the right place. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll make this one tighter and these ones tighter yet. And it all depends. Mm, I think this one actually should be tighter because these lines are smaller. If you look on uh, this truck, I made these the same and these the same, but I think the lines are wider. So it worked out okay. Mm, I don't mind that look though. Let's go back here. And just try it, see what it looks like. We'll, we'll just do them all. So we just got to get this in a place that's going to look okay. See, right here, it gets darker again. That really has to be down there. But that leaves us work to do right here, and we'll, I'll show you that after. It's kind of ugly. I hate that. That's why I work at 8192 by 8192. This is going to take a little after work. So we'll go to the lines. And we will delete that. Got to take a little bit more off of there. And there's that little problem right there. This one should come off to put there. Maybe a little more. Yeah, I mean, from 50 feet, it looks good. But I'm always going in here and I'm going, oh, darn, look at that right there. You know, it's it's silly, I know. It's <laughs> call me crazy. So what we can do is with this outer curve here, I'm wondering. Now nah, we'll we'll leave that as is. Let's uh, go back to the ellipse tool. And it's there. Let's grab whatever we think we're going to use for this one. I see something that looks good on the inside of that. And that's a nice radius right there. That ended up being, here's that 34 by 34 again. That line isn't coming forward enough on the right. Uh, but that's all right. We can fix that. So we probably go right there. Go back to the uh, line. Select the line tool. Just extend this into here a bit. Out here a bit. Kind of fix that up. See what happens when we trim that. It may be the circle may be too low. Maybe too low. Let's find out. 
go to layer five. Cut that. Oops. Wait a sec. Do I have them on this layer? Where is the circle? Oh, don't tell me I put it on the wrong layer. I did. Undo, undo, undo. Uh, okay, let's go to the right layer. Just to make sure. There we go. Let's call this arcs. <clears throat> Get myself sorted out here. Just adjusting my posture. I'm getting all sloopy like I was listening to tunes. and <laughs> This is weird actually doing this like this. As usually I got tunes playing and having a good old time. I think right there looks pretty good. Now we can trim it and we'll adjust the lines as necessary. Okay, here's that little bit of crap in there again. Hmm. We'll deal with it. And then we'll go to the line tool. So bring something across there. And once again, you see those little issues popping up. So I grab the uh, eraser. I'll give it a hard edge. Oh, uh, that's going to be on the line. Take that out. And anything else? So then we'll go back to the line tool. I'm going to make a three pixel wide line here. Go back to the. Uh, I'm gonna do it under arcs, I think. I'm gonna go in here. And I'm gonna just bring this out a little bit just to fill that little bit in. And I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna do it again. Just here. I'll grab the eraser tool. And that's on the line right there. I'll thin that out a bit. I don't know. Just from a distance, it's going to look a little bit better. A little better than this right here. It's it's. I know it's in the weeds, but it's just the way I roll. Uh, okay, well, we're on lines. Yeah, so let's fix the color in here up a little bit. I just get that little light spot out of there. And then here we can just go across there, fill that. Uh, I can just draw something in here. Lift that up a little bit. And we can go erase. Just bring this down a little bit. Make that a little fainter in there. That's on the circle. If we can. No, let's go back to the line. Oh, that is still on the line. There we go. Oops. Don't want to get too close to it. Let's try and now that's a problem when you got these really shallow lines. They're not very steep. You get out here, you can still see that fuzziness right there. So we got to get that out of there. I just want it to look good from about here. Sort of getting there. Uh, this side needs work here, so go back to the line. Not too bad. Just let's see what this looks like from out here. A little fat. Race. Don't to take too much out. Just look at it. It's probably going to be all right. Now here, this looks funny to me, across there. I think what I gotta do, grab this arc. Oh, we're getting a piece of the other one. Still getting a piece of the other one. Oh, we can erase it if we have to. Let's go. I think that has to come down a bit. It's too high. I'll 
grab the line. And go back to the arc. Get rid of this here. Go back to a line tool. Go to line. Try connecting that. Oops. Got to switch it to five pixels. We'll get this in the right place first. Kind of have to be there, I think. Oh boy. See if we can get there. That's better. Got the angle right. No. Try that. Then we'll trim it. Switch it to five. Let's see if the line looks, that looks sort of better. Yeah, so this is where it gets funny. So when you're doing, uh, when you're doing skins like the other one on the 389, you don't have to do all of this. It's because the line down the hood is sloping is what's causing the problem. So, but this is, you know, it may seem tedious and like, oh man, but it makes a nice paint job when you do all this stuff. So we've got to get that's bottom of this looks terrible. Start out about here. Right down to there. So I um yeah, okay, we're gonna just run with that for now. What you can do if you want to fix this a little more. Go to the uh, lasso select. Then what we can do is we can go up here to, let's see, right there. We can come down here. I uh, should do that again. And just pick a point down here and just take off any high points there. It looks a little better already. And then this little bit here, you can also use the tool here and just get anything you think you're up a little high, like right there. Just take it off and we'll, um, I'll come back and look at all that later. So anyway, yeah, it's still a little bad, but it's, it's doing the job. Let's go with a uh, ellipse select. We'll go like this, oh, a little too much. We get enough of it. And we're on arcs. Copy paste. That down to here. The line's getting a little tight for it, but we'll, we can make it work. We'll go up uh, about here and we'll fix it up. What you can do with these is kind of cool. Um, there's different ways to fix this all the issues we're having right here. But we'll start with that uh, lasso tool. We'll, oops, no, we're not in close enough here. Grab a little bit of this. I'll go here, grab a little bit of that. That's on the line, I guess. Oops, not that much. <laughs> it's you know where they're picking the line or the arc. We'll we'll fix it when we get the whole thing uh, as one when we join it all together. We're gonna go over here, add a little bump right there, and then fatten this up right here just a little bit. And then what you can do is. Um, yeah, that, that does, that's not very good. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to show you the other the other way of doing this. Let's let's the way I usually do this. I've been showing you all of this, but let's go to arcs. Get rid of that. I think this calls for just doing it by hand. Let's see what we can get rid of. Okay, switch to lines. I'm going to switch to rectangle select. You can get rid of some of this a little bit. And just do the line 
and what I do here, I'm not quite at a 45 here. I usually like to work at a 45. Uh, we're on, uh, go to five pixels. We're on arcs. Just pick a spot, go there, and then just, you can do it by hand. And sometimes you can get it more where you want it. Bring that into there. This is still going to need a little touch up. So that has to come down. And as that comes down, that has to come down. This one has to come a bit. This has to come down. Oops. Control Z, Control Z will bring you back to where you were. Now we can fix that stuff after. And that's kind of fairly fast way of doing it too. I like the arcs when they're 90 degrees. It's it's easier when the two lines are meeting at 90 degrees that you're trying to do the work with. It's a little easier. Yeah, it's too high. Once again, this is going to need fixing up. But, yeah, this one here doesn't look very good, does it? Darn. We'll take that one there. We'll put it there. And we'll go back to this other one. Oh, I guess I don't have to do that. I can just leave it. Go back here. Grab the erase tool. Just another way of taking care of it. Just erase it. Try again. That wasn't very good. Um... Five. It looked kind of terrible. Got to get the arc right. It was, there we go. That's better. And we could always just fix the rest of it up instead of messing with it so much. Look at it from out here again. Yeah, it's much better. It's still a little high, though. Bring it down. Move that up. Funny thing is, like when you move it, it changes. Like it, because the pixel thing, like it's a bummer working in pixels. I wish I knew how to work in vector lines or whatever they call it. There are tools that allow you to do it, but you know, I'm just an old dog and not uh, so hot at new tricks. Let's go with the line tool, three pixels. this up a little bit actually you know what spend a lot of time doing this and I should be moving on to the uh, getting the uh, what you want to see is how do you get this do the metal flake I'm sure that's what you're wanting to see All right, anyway, that'll probably work. So let's uh, just do the same thing for the bottom here. We're going to go get rid of all these corners. You know what I'll do? Let's just go fast here. We're going to go with the lasso select. We're going to go right here like this. Come back. We're just going to go through them all. And we're just going to draw them all. Oops, darn, undo, lines, delete. We're just going to draw them all with, uh, by hand and get going here. So I'm taking too long. Oops, it's going to be five. Taking way too long. I'll show you how to do it, and then we can move on. Let you guys get on with your days. So this isn't very good either, is it? Uh, lasso. Got to take a little more of this away. There. Back to the arcs. Back to the line. Five. I guess it'll be better. I'm 
just do a few of these here. Oh, that's a weird angle. This may not work out right either. Yeah, that's... don't think that's what it's going to look like. Oh, actually, it's not terrible because the... Yeah. Just leave it for now. Because that line is tighter in the middle through here. And it's okay. From a distance, it looks great. <laughs> As we say here in Calgary, it looks good from McLeod Trail. Okay, that's no good. Lines. I gotta trim this one higher here. And back to the arc. Okay, that's good enough to get us going. So now uh, what we want to do for this is we're going to, um, oh, I guess what we need to do, shoot. I was kind of hoping to, um, hmm. yeah, we, we can't copy this corner over here because the difference in the angles. So that's unfortunate. So what we can do, though, is we're going to go over to this end. Uh, so lines, we're going to grab the, let's grab the uh, trim tool, the rectangle select. we got to figure out where the all kind of go straight. I think it's right about here. That bottom one is going to be a little... I think what we need to do is get these two and these two about here. That one there. That one there. And then we're going to grab these. Bring them up to here. Grab this one. Here, I'll grab all of them. Drag them out here to wherever they're going to go. So this is the big cab. I always start with the big cab, and then I move my way down. Oops, undo. I meant to grab this. I'm going to go about there. And then we're going to Control C, Control V, copy and paste. Go to the 15 degrees. We're going to take that over here. And we're going to go uh, Control X. Lines, we're going to go new layer again. Call this one Vert. Again, paste it in there. Now we can bring this over here. We can figure out where we're going to go here. I think we need to be up here somewhere. Something like that. And before we do, um gonna undo, 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 undo. Go back here. I'm gonna actually extend it. And I'm gonna go control X. I'll create that layer again that I lost when I undid vert. And paste that in there. Get it to the 15. Now it's long enough that it goes whatever height we need. And I'm going to go about there. And I'm going to control C. Go to lines, control V. Back here, hit shift. And bring it parallel again. And we're going to figure out where we're going to go across there. 
So what I'm going to do now, uh, just in the sake of expedience and time, this is where we are here. We got this done. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go ahead and do all these corners the same way I did the other ones. So you don't, and then uh, I can come back and we're going to put the uh, metal flake behind the lines and that's what you're here to see. So <laughs> I've dragged this on forever. Sorry, I apologize for that. But you just sort of see the process of what goes on and trying to get something to look sort of half decent and uh, a few different options and how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So now for the fun part. Oh, excuse me. So I just uh, freehanded the corners there just to speed it up instead of messing with the circles. Like I say, the circles work a lot better when you're doing 90 degree corners. And if you got a whole lot of them to do, like what I'll do is I'll make a bunch of circles. I'll cut them into quarters and I'll copy and paste a whole bunch of quarters and just grab them and move them where I need them. So anyway, let's um, get on with the uh, the fun part. So what we need to do, we're going to take our arcs. Oh, what's on layer five anyway? Anything? I don't think I put anything there. Okay. Well, let's move it down underneath the lines. We're going to take the arcs. We're going to merge them with the lines. So now it's just lines. Now we have layer five is where our goal is going to be. It's going to be underneath this, and then we're going to trim it away. And this is going to go quick. So we'll have some lines here in no time. So we'll just grab a bunch of this random doesn't matter how much we're going to copy it we're going to go here and stick it on that layer oops wrong one this one in layer five uh, we want it on five we'll keep the canvas size oh oh I got the, I didn't, ca didn't copy anything it's got to be here copy there we go and we're going to put it here, and we'll keep the canvas size. So what we want, and we're going to look at this underneath there and see what it's going to... So that's a pretty big flake. So what we can do, because we've got so much of this, that we can take this and hit uh, shift, and we'll grab the corner, and we'll bring it down. And what it's going to do, it's going to compress the size of the flake. So our flake looks a little smaller, which is a little better. We don't... We don't want it so small we're going to lose any detail, but we don't want it so big that it looks goofy. So I think we could probably just a little bit more compression on it. And that's why you make such a great big sheet of it. Now you're getting to see why. So we're going to drag this around a bit and see where we can, you know, get some of these patterns out of it. And... It's easy to fix that anyway. It's not the end of the world if there's some of those in there. I'll show you how. So we got one right there that's kind of annoying. So we'll move it off the front. So this is nice and clear in here. That's that's going to be an important part of the look is how does this front corner look. I think if we... Where... Try to find a spot on the sheet of stuff that looks good. I think where we were was not looking bad. Got a bit of muck right in there in the corner. Don't want that in it. Oh, I think I could live with this right here and then we can take this bit out I'll show you how all right so in the rest of it's got some stuff but we'll deal with it so that's going to be our metal flake so now what we can do say okay hit the uh, escape button get rid of that now what we'll do is just start hacking a bunch of it away that we don't need uh, we don't want to take too much because we're going to move some stuff around we may we may need it, so we'll just start taking some away. That's a bit much. Start there and take whatever's behind there out. Go down to there. Oh, there's. Yeah, I'll we'll take this much out for now. And now, what we want to do? So this bottom stripe here has got some blotchiness in it. 
see here and wherever. So what we can do here, we're going to go about here. And this bit right below it doesn't look quite as bad. We could go down about here. We'll grab a layer of this right there. Control C, Control V. Oh, moved it all over. Undo. Oh, there, here, I'll show you. There's a trick. I just did uh, Control Z to undo. And make sure you're kind of in the center when you do a Control C, Control V. And there, this time it didn't take off because I was over there in my view. So what we're doing is we're just going to grab this one we move it up and see, all, see those blotchy bits? Gone. And because it's so pixelated, you generally don't even see anything at this end. Like, you could find a place to put it in. It looks kind of natural. And then that doesn't look too bad. What we can do where we have little bits like this that we don't like, we can just go over here and this little section here looks pretty good. So we'll just grab some of this. When I find this, see, it just blends in so nicely. It's crazy. It's good. We got a little bit of color change there. So we've got to find a little bit of light to dark. Fix that. So light to dark, that would be about right here. Oh, let's try that. Drag that over there and see if we can't just... There. Oh, it looks much better into there. Let's see what else do we have to fix. This bit right here, maybe. But mm, I'm not so sure. Not so sure. Let's see if there's anything more glare. That's real bad right there. We gotta get rid of this thing. So we're gonna find a similar let's see. Let's go about up here. Grab something from here. And you can't twist this. In this case, we can't turn it. It would look goofy. Cause if you turn it, you're gonna move the pixels. Like if I grabbed this and did this with it, now you're tilting the pixels. And I don't know if that's a good idea, but that fixes that up. Got another one here. So we will, it's darker. Grab some darker stuff here. Put that about there and then come up here and fix this bit. It's a little lighter. Got a piece of this. And you see how the, the, the pixel thing, it just blends in. Like, it's pretty good. There's not a lot of drama there. It's not terrible. There's a bit of pattern right here and there. So we could fix those. Some of that. got a bit of a line we're getting a bit of a line in it here let's try copy paste let's keep the color together I think I'm gonna rotate that 180 oh, <laughs> that line's still there so that's no good so we're gonna that down to here and we'll try and grab something new maybe right here that in there a bit of that but you know as we go along like we can we can fix the things that don't look so good so but so I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this I'll pause for a sec and then I'll come back after I fixed up a bunch of it and then we'll trim it away and we'll have stripes and uh, we got to do the same with the silver so we're gonna go quick here back in a bit Okay, so I got the gold looking pretty good without any of these little, you know, weird patterns in the way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trim uh, all of it away except for what we want to have remaining. So the best way to do it is get it sort of close, get behind that stripe, cut that away. We've got to get everything that's underneath here away. And we're going to go and get our lasso select. 
go to here. I will go up here. Actually, you know what we could do? Just go around this corner and come way down to here and all the way over to there. Delete all that. And we could go ahead and get this corner right now. And now got these long lines, which is kind of a bummer. So it makes it sort of more difficult to trim. Whoops, darn, that didn't work. Let's try it from down here. Don't want to get so much of it out of the screen there. I'll go down. We can come back and trim any little things up later. And you notice the gold is underneath. This is why the gold is underneath the stripe, so we can trim it like this. So, it would probably be fastest for the arc if we just moved along like this and then go and get the other stuff later. Oops, don't know how far I can go. Yeah, we're going to miss a bunch of it there because of the arc, so that's fine. Just go in here. Don't go as far. That's about got that. Get rid of a bigger chunk there. Go that far. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Uh, let's do it like this. in here this may actually take an eraser to do this I as it was easy to do on the other one the other trucks because it was all straight here oh boy we're getting right up into that better undo that let's try it with an eraser edge is sharp house 15 look uh, a little risky. You don't need to go that big. 11. Yeah, 11 will work. Let's go along here. I'm just going left to right, or right to left, because it's an easy motion with my mouse. So I'm right handed. Left-handed, you might find the other stroke easier. Who knows? It's all a matter of what you're comfortable with. There, now we go back in here. It's a little tighter. I'm going to use the lasso tool here just for accuracy. We can just kind of, doesn't matter. We don't get the left edge. We're going for the right one right here. Then we'll come back and get the other one. We can switch back to the uh, eraser and zoom in here for the corner. Now it's rock and roll time. Oh, we got to do this here. Sorry. Let's get that. Uh, we'll start here. Let's take a big swath of it and see what we get. Wow, bonus. Got all of that. Oh, we don't need this. That's the silver. What am I being all so careful for? Jeez. What a putz. This is where you can comment, doofus. 
We just want to be careful of this corner here. That's where the silver's got to go, all that stuff. Okay, so now what we can do is go here. Oh, actually, it's just as easy to do this. Start in the bottom corner and go up and then cross. Take out a great big chunk of it. Another big chunk. Ooh, I came close to that edge there. Oops. There we go. Looks good. Looks good. I'll get rid of the rest of this. Sometimes what I'll do here is I'll just grab something like the eraser and I'll make it pretty big. And I'll just kind of go in that area right down there just in case something might show up that you don't see right now. There was a little piece right there we just nicked out of there. Just go around and just look and see that you got all of the stuff. It'll show up later if you didn't. <laughs> and this is why I keep my drawings. Uh, I keep them as PDNs. And I don't, I don't get rid of them because I can go and the, in layers. I keep the layers so that I can go back and fix things if I have to or if I want to modify it. Anyway, there we go. So what I'm going to do, we're going to grab the silver. So we're going to grab another layer. So let's uh, give that one its name, gold. Create a new one. And this is going to be silver. I'll go grab our silver here. We'll grab a big chunk of this. It doesn't really matter. The silver is a little goofier, but just the way it came out, I it was really tough finding a good uh, silver donor. Oops, wrong layer again. There we go, copy. Excuse me, silver, paste. Keep the canvas size. Now what's the... We want to compare the flake sizes. Silver is just a little too coarse. Not by a lot, but we'll compress it down. Looks a little better. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to make it smaller than the other one. I think that's pretty close. So now you can see we've got this light area in the silver. It's kind of a bummer. So what I did with the other trucks is I put that light area in the middle of this bit here. So it kind of looks a little natural where maybe some light is shining across there. And, you know, we just want to make sure we don't have anything too weird in there and pattern-wise that we have to get rid of. That's not bad. Patterns along here aren't bad. There's a little something right here. Where was that? Right there is a kind of a face sticking out. But that doesn't look terrible. It's nothing we can't fix. So we're going to go OK. That's there. And we're going to cut some of it away just to make the drawing easier to manage so there's not so much stuff for the computer to draw. I'll take a bunch of that away. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix the little spots that look weird, like that little face sticking out at us right there. That's a little darker, so what we're going to do, we're going to go over here and grab something from here. 
drag that over there and see how that see that gets gets rid of it pretty good. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to do that uh, all around the uh, stripe, and then we'll cut it away, and I'll show you what we got. So I'll be back after this is all trimmed away. As you guys don't need to see me do all that again. So back in. Okay, uh, we're back. So got the silver layer done, and now what I would do is uh, typically at this stage of a drawing, what I'm going to do because this is a sort of you know it's a little complicated. You don't want to you know if something's wrong or in this case, I'm going to redo this <laughs> for the skin that I'm going to put out. So this is a sample only of what's going to happen, but or how to do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of these stripes as they go from the front to the back here. So by the time they get from here to here, they're wider. Uh, but I'm going to do that in my own time. I'm not going to bore you guys with it. I'm just going to, and then, you know, when they go up here, they're going to be that bigger width. I just didn't want them all jammed in down here at this end. It's not going to look good. So I'm going to redo from here all of this and just leave this bit in the lower bit. But what I want to do, you know, for the purposes of demonstrating this is how it's done or how I do it. And once again, anything I do doesn't mean you have to do things the way I do because I just do my own thing. You know, I'm kind of self-taught at this and um, these are things I learned. Uh, but I have had tips and people have pointed out in comments and videos and like Lonnie for one and uh, I think uh, Jay Cush and... Carlos and people have, uh, I'm pretty sure, have pointed out things to me in comments that have been useful. Um, I appreciate that. And if anybody sees anything here I'm doing that's real goofy, you can always uh, comment. So anyway, at this point, what I do, so we've got, we don't even have a name for it yet. It's still the template. So we can't save it as this. We've got to save it as something. So I'm going to, you know, this is where Polly's going to get mad at me because I, I save things. I make DDSs. <laughs> Oh boy, because uh, Mod Studio 2 converts it. Anyway, or they'll convert a PNG, but you got to save it as something. It's a PDN now, so I just move it straight to DDS because that's what goes hand in hand with the TOBJ. It's looking for a DDS. So, anyway, side story. I'm going to save as, and uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what's going on with the. Uh, oh, here it goes. It's just a little sleepy. Freightliner Classic. I'm going to put it in PDN file. I'm going to call it uh, GPC for goggle. Oh, wait a minute. That GPC for goggles, paint, and chrome underscore donor. So this, the reason I'm calling it donor is because that's going to save it now. Now anything I do from this point on, that is a save point. And what I would typically do right now is I would now I can combine these things. So I take those three layers and make them one layer. So now it's, and then I would call this drivers. And the, what I'm going to do it right now is I'm going to, I've got the drawing rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I've got, or the whole image, I've got to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And this is the default for Rudy. You can see it matches these other ones now. So now it's, in its proper orientation. So now what I can do is I can go and duplicate that layer, call it pass, and then I'll go to layers and I'll go flip horizontal. Now here it is over on the other side of the truck. All my stripes, everything. And I'll look at the gap along here and see. Uh, looks pretty good. I think I would leave it there. I wouldn't mess with that. And then what I would do is I'll show you how I, I'm going to show you a couple um, more little tips and tricks here while I'm at it and for getting stuff onto the back. And then we'll show you the different cab sizes and how to do them uh, real quick. Oh, geez, I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should make that another video. That would probably be a good idea. So let's go to the driver's side. We're going to well, go to pass, create a new layer up there. 
go to the drivers. We're going to rectangle select. And we're going to, so this line here and this line here are in common. There and there. And not 100% sure of the scale. Not sure where all of this stuff is below that line. But we know that this and this are going to be in common. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to drivers. Oh, and another thing when you're doing these flake things like this, we're going to just, okay, we're going to aim for the center of that. Let's go over here. We'll grab a bit more of it. And we're going to go down here. And I guess we'll grab this one right here, this other darker line. But we're in the center of that thick one. I'm going to go uh, copy. Go to this new layer, which is going to be rear. Paste. Hold the shift. Rotate that. Bring it over here. And we're going to look for the center of that line. There we go. And did that hit the center of that one? It did. So we might be in good shape. So we want this centered on there. There. And we can go copy paste. Get a bit more of it. Now those inner uh, fairings are way out of scale. So you can you can start. You can take this and put it over there. Now here's the thing I wanted to say earlier on. Now it's the time. Is you can't drag and stretch these lines. Like so if we were doing, if I wanted to put a layer above rear, call it. I always call it inner spoiler on this truck. And then you go to the rear and you would uh, get your rectangle select and you would grab this, grab a chunk of this, copy paste and drag it over here to stick it on here. It's going to, well, <laughs> actually I did a pretty good job of that actually. But what happens is it changes the scale of the flake. See what it's doing there? So it's not going to look like it does on the rest of the truck. So what you have to do when you do this is you go over here and you would go to your rear, go copy and paste and drag it over here. And now say, for example, you didn't get enough of it. And oh, the other thing is you got to line it up because when you drag it over, it's lined up. So now you're short a little bit. So you just go copy paste again and move a bit more of it. So you got to do these stripes a little differently when you're using this flake. And then for that, you could go, if you don't want to do that whole thing again, you could duplicate that layer, grab that one, layer, flip horizontal, and there it is on the other side. And then you could grab your trim and just cut that away a bit. Just cut that one away a bit. And then, oops, merge them. Oops, I went the wrong way undo wanted to merge that there we go now I can use that tool on either side so that's essentially how I go about it so there you are stripe uh, metallic stripe 101 I guess we'll just leave it there so you saw how I like it you know I found some metallic or metal flake, I keep saying metallic, it's metal flake, and um, went and did my thing with it. So pretty easy. It's it's tedious, this whole deal of making these big things, like you can see how often it repeats. So here, right here is the first section right there. It repeats to there. Oh, no, to here. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're small, and so you copy, and it keeps getting bigger. So you copy it, flip it on edge, flip it on edge, flip it on edge, and then once you go all the way across, start going down, and you copy, and you flip it, and flip it, and flip it, and so that you always get a, an edge that matches, and then you go into your drawing, and once you got everything in here, then you go and you get rid of any of those faces, there's something right there I should fix. But um, so you don't get that symmetrical looking 
thing anywhere. So I, I pretty much got them all out of here. Came out pretty good. So that's it. I think I'll leave it there. I'll do another um, video on more tips and tricks and how to, um, a, a good one. Uh, I'll preview what, what I'll do. I'm going to open uh, Montana Express. This is a good one. Hopefully this is the PDN. You have to excuse this computer. It's pretty slow. <laughs> this is my old, uh, this was my gaming PC. So what I did here, you can see, this is a little thing I do. See over here on the right, I got all the templates. So there's the day cap. So we start at the bottom. We got a flat top. We got an 84. Got a 70. Let's go down to a 58 and a 48. And you see what's different with each one of these is with this particular paint job, we're going to have a rear for all of these various ones, rear for the day cab, rear for the 48. You see how it's changing there? And what's changing is the um, where we pick this stripe from to put it across the back of the cab because this stripe isn't a straight line. It keeps changing. It's got a swoop to it. So each cab ends at a different place along this swoop. So you got to figure out how to get this onto the various rear of the cab. So I put all of the templates in. Uh, there's the 48. So we got the... Uh, or, and then the script and stickers and everything are different for each one. It's a, It's a lot of work. There's the rear for the 48. We've got the template for the 48 up. And I'll, uh, if you're interested, I can show you uh, how to do all of this in a, another tutorial that will, uh, it'll save you a lot of time. And just by the way, here's that difference in scale on those inner spoilers. Like they're, they're, they're kind of messy, so. But <laughs> another story for another day. I'll cut this one short-ish. <laughs> Take care. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or whatever, don't uh, hesitate to ask. Take care. Bye for now.